currently on my way to Spent Thrift Farm in Lexington for a stallion showing. And it occurred to me that a lot of people who are not really heavily involved in the thoroughbred industry might not know what a stallion showing is or what it looks like. So I thought we could talk about it today and I would show you the one that I'm going to. So a stallion showing is an opportunity, it's typically privately scheduled for people to come to one of these major stallion complexes and look at the horses that they have available for stud. A lot of times you won't look at all of them, especially for a farm like Spent Thrift that has like 20 horses. Um, you'll actually just call in advance and say that you are interested in looking at specific horses whose progeny you're considering or who you're contemplating breeding to. Typically what happens is someone from the stallion complex, often the manager, maybe an assistant manager, will oversee the showing and answer questions. And the people who groom these stallions will showcase the stallions. They'll walk them back and forth. You can watch them walk from the side. You can watch them walk from the front or the back. And they'll often set the stallion up so you can see confirmationally what their great strengths are, what their flaws are. And seeing them walk is really important because a lot of people are breeding for a certain type of runner and thoroughbreds are a wildly diverse breed. You can have horses with really, really high action and you can have horses with super flat and linear movement. So that's kind of like what we're looking for is trying to figure out uh, what traits these stallions have and if they are ones that would benefit either the breeding program, if they complement those of the mare he's being bred to, or if he has attributes that he may have passed along to progeny that would denote the progeny being successful at the discipline or the type of racing of the buyer's choosing. And while I was talking, I made a mistake and I missed the gate of entry for the Spent Thrift Stallion Complex, so now I have to figure out how to turn around. That should tell some of you who haven't been to a Central Kentucky breeding farm though, like just how big these places are. Some of them are over a thousand acres and it's really, really easy to get lost in a maze of 70, 80, or 90 buildings. Papa, you're okay. Sprinter last year. Breeder's Cup winner. Very good breeder. We're anxious to see what those first poles look like. This the uh He's going to have three or four in the Breeders' Cup. By my standards, will be in the Classic. Uh, he'll have Mr. Money in the Dirt Mile. Wild Man Jack will be in the Turf Sprint. And, uh... Really, really good 
failure this year out of the one point. So not a bad time to get in behind him as well. good for 24. Hey guys, I just got home a little bit ago and I have to run out to my barn in a couple of minutes because there's some bad weather coming tomorrow and I want to bring my horses in, but none of my stalls are bedded down. So I only have a couple seconds to talk about what we saw today at Spendthrift, but here we go. One of the questions that I asked a lot and other people ask is why do people do stallion shows in the digital age? There are so many videos of these horses online. Why don't people just log on and watch those? in order to get an idea of the horse's movement and confirmation. And that's a really good point. The reason that some people continue to view horses in person, especially if they're local to the stallion complexes where the stallions that they are interested in breeding to live, is because you get a lot better idea of the stallion's qualities and his fault when you view him in person. Today, for example, um, there were a couple of horses who I was really surprised to see had pretty significant conformational faults when they were standing, but you couldn't see them when they were walking. When a seller of a sport horse or even someone who's marketing a stallion is composing their advertisement, a really good salesman will be able to highlight the horse's attributes and disguise its weaknesses. So a lot of times when you have a horse who, for example, might not have a good walk on him, you won't see pictures or videos of him walking. You'll see confirmation shots. If you have a horse with exceptionally weak confirmation in lieu of confirmation photographs, he might be advertised with, with pictures of him running or pictures of him in the winner's circle or even in his turnout pasture at the stallion complex. So it's really beneficial to see them in person because ideally when you're there, your own eyes will not lie to you in the way that an advertisement may lie by omission. Another thing is that horses can look really different in photographs compared to real life when we're talking about their size. There are some horses who photograph looking very, very large and some horses who photograph looking smaller than they are. And this can be due to how they're set up in the photograph, who's holding them in the picture, things like that. I have a friend who's well over six feet tall and he shows stallions all the time and he makes really tall and powerful stallions look kind of runty when he's showing them. Another thing that you can see when you go to a stallion show versus seeing stallions online or seeing one or two at a time you can kind of get a feel for the management culture of the stallion complex and see what they do well and what they don't do well. For example, there's another facility in Lexington where if you go and you look at all of their stallions, you'll realize that it's not just one or two that are very overweight. 
in general, this facility seems to have an issue with weight management in their stallions. At Spendthrift, a couple of things I saw were one, all of the horses were very, very well turned out. They were all groomed like they were going to a showing every single day. And we had horses pulled out for us who were not on our initial list. So that kind of shows that there is a attention to detail and care and aesthetic at Spendthrift. And I also thought that the stable maintenance was impeccable. The barn was one of the cleanest facilities I've ever been at. And with the exception of the stallion complex, the rest of Spendthrift is very plain and very traditional. The stallion complex is more ornate, but every single inch of the barn was beautifully manicured. And there obviously is a very strong culture that praises detail and good maintenance. Now, one of the things that I did notice were a lot of the horses had long toes and underrun heels. This is a really common hoof type that you see in thoroughbreds that ideally needs to be corrected in order to have a well-balanced hoof. If you have a hoof that is allowed to get extremely long in the toe and extremely underrun in the heel, it can actually cause shifts in the way that you view the horse's overall balance and straightness. For example, one of the stallions we saw today, I was looking at him and I thought that his knees were very, very poor. And then I looked at his feet and realized that his knees might only look poor because his hooves were so off balance. And this wasn't just one or two of the horses that we saw today. It was the overwhelming majority of them had some type of underrun heel going on. And if I had just seen this horse one at a time, or if I'd seen a video of him on the internet outside of the context of the rest of the horses that he is living with and is managed with, I think that I might have just seen his knees and then, oh, that horse has bad knees and skipped past him. But he's still kind of on my radar of a horse who may be a quality horse to breed to or buy progeny from because I'm wondering, you know, I've seen so many horses today that have the underrun heel and the poor hoof balance and composition. Maybe his knees aren't actually that bad. And I may have not considered that had I not seen all of the horses that came out before him. If you are interested in doing a stallion showing, a lot of the major farms will have open houses around like late autumn, early winter, generally around the time of the Keeneland November breeding stock sale or a little bit after that. And obviously this is because it's when breeders are beginning to make their final decisions on who their horses will be bred to in the following spring. A lot of these farms also have open houses that are directed towards tourists who are just interested in seeing and meeting the famous horses. If you are a commercial breeder or you're someone who is considering purchasing stock, you can contact the stallion office directly or you can have that communication take place through your agent. I hope that you guys found that interesting because I know that I did. Um, I live here in Lexington and everyone kind of knows that Lexington is this pinnacle of high class horses and high rolling players of the game, but it all happens behind these farm gates so much that you never get to see much of it apart from like two minute blips of the big classic races every year. So being able to go behind the scenes and see these stallions in their daily routine and being able to have access to these facilities, if only just for a short time, is really, really interesting because I mean, this facility is five minutes from my house and I drive past it so many times a week and you, just for like an hour, it was really cool to be a part of that experience and get to see what goes on there. If you guys have any questions about stallion shows or thoroughbred breeding, you can ask them in the comments section and I'll try to answer them. And if I don't know the answer, I'll reach out to some of the bloodstock agents that I know and see if I can get them answered for you. I'm not sure what we're gonna do or where we're going to go next, but until then, ride safe, be well, and I'll see you in the next video.